What's up guys, it's Trevor with Ember's Living. Today we're breaking down a couple barbecues. We have the Weber Spirit, which is a tried and true grill versus a brand, a brand spanking new model by Napoleon. Right. This is the Napoleon Freestyle model. What's funny is Weber dominates the lower end space, which is what the Spirit is. These are both uh, entry level or base grade model grills. They dominate this space. Whereas Napoleon, I think sort of does a better job with the upper end grills. But now Napoleon's released a brand new model to compete with the Weber Spirit. Very, very similar price point. I'm gonna tell you the differences, which one I think's better. Let's go. All right, first things first, as always, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, do all the things. It helps us out a ton when you do it. If you're in the Denver, Colorado area, our showroom's in Colorado. Come to our showroom, check it out for yourself. Another elephant in the room, I gotta get out of the way. I look pretty snazzy today, right? Pretty sharp, got on the Jordan Cool Gray 11s. Wow. Some new uh, kicks I just copped. Big time closet sneakerhead, big time. If you guys don't know that about me already, you guys are probably thinking, man, Trevor looks nice. Well, my wife so lovingly put it that she's like, you know, people watch you on YouTube. Be nice if you look nice once in a while. Thanks, wife. Uh, <laughs> she said the, the Embers polos are getting a little old, so look a little sharp today, so don't mind me. Uh, anyways, we got the Weber Spirit as we talked about. This thing's tried and true. Um, Weber, like I said, has been dominating. This is what you're gonna see in almost every big box store, uh, Ace Hardware, Costco, whatever. Weber Spirit is like the front runner grill. Now there's the Genesis and the Summit, which are more upper, upper end models. We do a review on those if you want to look at the differences between these models, but the Spirit is really gonna be their base grade model. So Napoleon has a new base grade model that really is apples to apples with this grill, and it's the Napoleon Freestyle. Now, if you know anything about Napoleons, um, like I said in the intro, they have the Rogue and the Prestige series, and then their top of the line, which is the Prestige Pro series. Especially on the upper end stuff, they destroy pretty much all the competition. I don't think in that price bracket, that range, there's a better model than the Prestige Pro on a cart. Pretty stinging hard grill to beat. However, we just did an in-depth review on this grill all by itself, and I was realizing that it's really apples to apples with the Weber. So we needed to get it side by side with the Weber, break these two down, and uh, see which one we like better. All right, I'm gonna beat you guys to it before you guys blast me, because you guys do this all the time when I did like a Rogue versus uh, the Genesis review. The Spirit has the E210 and the E310. So the 210 and 310 is a two burner versus three burner. You'll see the Freestyle, they offer the, I think it's a 325 and 425, it's new, I don't know the model numbers yet. Uh, but they have a three burner and a four burner. So I know you guys are saying, you need to review the 310 because this has three burners and that has three burners. There isn't an identical apples to apples comparison between these two grills. These, as you can see, and we'll measure them, I thought it'd be more appropriate to go side by side based off of the size of the grill, not how many burners it has. So these grills are the same size. And I think you, you look like it eyeballing it, Chris, that they're pretty close to the same size. Yes. Yeah, they're very, very similar. They're the closest you can get in size. However, in this size, Weber does a two burner, Napoleon does a three burner. We're gonna actually test these, put some toast on here, some bread on here, see which one does better with hot spots, which one does a better job even cooking. I haven't tested either one of these side by side, so I actually don't know the answer ahead of time. We're just gonna go in there blind, see what happens. My initial thought is the Napoleon with the three burners, higher BTUs, I think it's gonna get hotter and give us the ability to sear, so we're gonna also see which one can get hotter. Uh, my gut would tell me that Napoleon would do a better job searing, but there's only one way to find out. So that's sort of the backstory. Um, I know it's not identical, but it's as close as we can get in size. Price-wise, pricing changes all the time. It's gonna change probably depending on when you watch that video, so I don't like to talk pricing a lot. But for comparison's sake, this grill is about $30, $40 cheaper. I think at the time of the, this video is published, this grill's $4.99, I think this grill's like $4.65, $4.69, something like that. $30 cheaper. You can get it, it's more expensive, and we'll talk about the carts in a minute. You can get it with an enclosed cart and four wheels, but that's even a little bit more. One of the annoying things about Weber, this is just me personally, 
probably just stocking SKUs and all that. This isn't a big deal for you, the homeowner. It is a little bit, but Weber makes so many ridiculous amount of SKUs. They have like the E210, the ES210, the Smart, the new Smart series. Uh, one has cast, iron, cast burners, one has, not cast burners, cast cooking grates, one has stainless cooking grates. The Genesis model, they have like a dozen Genesis models. It's like, give me a headache, like figuring out all these models. It's not necessarily a bad thing about products, but it's, it makes product confusion to me. And so that's part of the reason we do the videos is sort of clear up the product confusion. Uh, by the way, we got a bunch more Weber videos coming where we're gonna break down the differences with all the models. So hopefully we can save you some time and money in your research. Enough, let's get down to business. I'm gonna start from the base up. So essentially these are very, very similar carts, uh, minus the obvious. What's the obvious, Chris? One has a door. One has a door, one doesn't. And like I said, you can get this with the door, but once you get it to the, with the door, it's more expensive um, than the Napoleon. I personally am not a big fan of open carts. Um, it's been 50-50 in the comment section. You guys always say, same thing with this uh, propane on the side. I hate the way that looks on the side, but some people like it because they say it opens up storage space in here. Although with this wide open, I don't know what you're really gonna put down there, but aesthetically, not a big fan of the open cart with the propane tank on the side. However, one of the benefits is it's on the side, gives you storage here, and then Weber gives you this cool, this neat little meter to tell you how full your propane is with a quick glance. Both have plastic casters. And again, these are both entry level grills. So I'm not looking for anything way over the top here. I wouldn't expect anything way over the top or overly beefy because it's a price point grill. This is an entry level grill, but you do get a lot for an entry level, level, level grill in both of these models. Just kind of digressing a bit. These are the top two in their uh, existing categories, by the way. Uh, you do have the door here. Again, nothing, nothing great here with the door. It does have a magnet, plastic wheels. Propane tank's gonna sit inside. I think aesthetically, it just does a little bit more for you with that closed. Um, with them open, you can get critters in there. They can get into the grease tray. Dog can get in the grease tray. That being said, on the back of the Napoleon, it's wide open. So you can get to the grease tray from the back, unless it's up against a house. That wouldn't keep rodents out or anything, but it would keep like dogs away from getting back there and getting into that grease tray. So I think you get a little bit of functionality benefit with this being able to close with pets, not so much critters, but pets for sure. All right, that's enough on the stinking bases. We ready to talk about the rest of these grills? Side shelves. Side shelves, these guys do not retract on the Weber at least on that side, this side does retract. So on the Weber, only one side retracts. Napoleon, both sides retract, which is pretty nice because usually, not all the time, but usually if you're buying a grill this size, maybe you're in a compact space. And so when you're tucking it away or putting it away, you're gonna save a little space with both side shelves down. So I think from a functionality standpoint, that does, it give you a nice little benefit. Also, both grills have like little uh, tool hooks on the sides. Again, this is just plastic. Again, nothing, nothing crazy to review her right home about. But the only reason that you should buy the Freestyle, the one and only reason that makes it worth it, this guy right here. Bottle opener, are you kidding me? Done deal. Game, set, match, over. Freestyle wins. Just kidding, it doesn't. But bottle opener is pretty cool. That's a pretty nice little feature. All right, control panels. You can see here, here's our igniter on our control panel for our Weber. I'm gonna get into igniters in a minute when we get inside the fireboxes. Um, control panels, again. I'm, I'm painstakingly reviewing these 499 grills, but it's worth it. Okay, lids. Both have thermometers. I'm partial to the Napoleons. It's much larger. I'd say it's a good twice the size. These numbers are pretty tiny. Again, not a huge deal. I'm really nitpicking these things, but I do like the larger thermometer. Uh, gray color, comes in the black finish. Now, one of the claim to fame with Weber, and they're always promoting this, is how well their enamel does. So they say 
that they're enamel scratch proof. And you guys probably see me do this on their kettles all the time. But look at that. So that's pretty cool. Look at that, nothing. Why is that cool? No matter how long you have this grill, it's gonna hold up. By the way, both these grills have 10-year warranties. So warranty's the same. I've worked with both companies, file warranties before. They both do a phenomenal job with their warranties. So there's that for you. All right, should we test the Napoleon, Chris? Let's check it out. I'm kind of nervous. I haven't done the Napoleon before. They don't like do the claim to fame like Weber, but let's see. Nothing. So they're both gonna hold up aesthetically. I think this, this enamel finish is gonna hold up pretty well. We did that the other day on uh, a Weber kettle versus a Kamado Joe kettle. And what happened to our kettle? Our Kamado scratch. scratch up, we ruined that thing. <laughs> so I'm always a little nervous doing that. Not the smartest thing to do, but hey, we gotta review these things, am I right? All right, so we got aluminum on both sides. Uh, handles. All right, should we get inside? Get to the money shots. Money shots. Bam! Bam! That's where it's at. Warming rack. Warming rack. So the Napoleon fits in here really nice. Looks like both of them have little divots here. I'm assuming that's for a potential rotisserie because these guys have it too. Almost the exact same thing. Got two little holes and then a little little line across that's got to be for a spit rod so this is probably just this exact model but that's irritating me i don't know why uh it's just a little snug warming racks are about the same napoleon's a little bit wider i personally barely use a warming rack so i don't think that's anything to pick or choose from of course napoleon has cast iron with porcelain coating their signature wave rod these are patented of course these help with a couple of things. I think one gives you more surface area on your cooking um, with that serpentine style. And then also with this wave rod, they say when you run your veggies long ways or this way, um, it's gonna help or stop things from falling through as much. So that's a little bit added benefit. Again, not a huge benefit, but it's there. Weber, same exact material. Theirs has a flat side and then more of like a pointed triangular side. I never read if these were reversible or not. I suppose they would be. Um, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't be. But again, if you're not see seeing something here, you're not seeing a pattern. The pattern is these grills are really, really similar. All right, another surprise. Got our Weber flavorizer bars and our Napoleon. I guess you call them flavorizer bars too. Again, very similar. So they both use the same technology for flare-ups. Um, I personally love this method. They both do a great job without having flare-ups. I'd recommend both these grills for that. So again, very, very similar pattern here. Are you seeing a pattern, Chris? Yeah. Very similar. Fireboxes. Fully seamless aluminum tub. Napoleon, fully seamless aluminum tub. We'll say personally one difference. I like the black. They kind of blacked out this grill and I just think it looks a little more polished. That's just me though. That's not, one's not better. Just I kind of like the black aluminum versus the silver. So, very, very similar grills. In fact, their grease tray on the Weber comes down here. Everything funnels down in the middle and then Napoleon's is gonna be on the side. But again, same idea. Everything funnels down here. And then this whole thing slides out from the back if you wanted to as well. See this thing? This whole thing slides out. So again, very, very similar in principle. This has like a little grease catch here. Very. Have I said that very similar? All right, one big thing with ignition systems. They do have different ignition systems. So this is how you're gonna ignite your Weber. You're gonna turn this on. Now we got gas spewing, then you hit your igniter. See that? Now see, this is kind of cool. They have this little connector that connects the two burners. So if I turn this burner on without using the igniter, 
it will ignite because they're connected and I can shut just that side off, but we have a continuous gas line here. Now that's cool too, because if the Weber ever blows out here, it'll auto automatically relight itself. Now that's how you have to light the burner with the Weber. I've done this before in the videos that I got roasted on this not being a big deal, but I want to know your thoughts. If you're got a, a handful of food or a platter, you got to turn this on, then hit it. So you have to do two steps. Not a big deal. Napoleon does have a different ignition system. You can see we have these guys connecting our burner. So again, same idea. They'll always ignite, but Napoleon uses their jet fire spark igniter system. So the ignition is built into the knob. I think it's better because it's one step versus two. Watch this. Let's do the middle one. See when you press this in, it engage, engage. I just think it's cooler. One, it looks cool. Not that you're gonna be looking in there, but you can just quick go out and you're gonna light it. I also think it's better because if you have this on, it's just building up gas. So if you put it on too long, then you hit it, you could kind of get a delayed ignition like a didn't you get that when you're firing it, Chris? I did. Yeah, you got that a little bit. That's not gonna happen here because it's simultaneous. Again, it's not crazy, but it is different. I like the Napoleon igniters better. That is definitely one thing I can say for sure that I think is better is the Napoleon igniters. Now burners, we, we took these out and weighed these. It's screwed back in, so I'm not gonna unscrew it. You're just gonna have to trust me. This is what their burner looks like. Their burners weighed 11 ounces. So high BTU, 11 ounces in raw materials. Should we take out the Weber burner and weigh it? Let's check it out. Check it out, let me get that screw. Guys, come here. This is something I just discovered. Again, you may not think it's a big deal. The reason this connector's here is on the Weber is there's, there's no igniter. I don't know how I missed that. There's only an igniter on the left burner. So the only way to light this burner is to ignite the left burner first. That's annoying to me. That's just me, but that seems annoying that there's no way to light this burner without lighting this burner first. Not my favorite. All right, let's weigh this guy on our food scale here. Oh, so we got 7.8 ounces. It's about three ounces less. It's gotta be inferior. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's very unscientific, but these are not quite as heavy as the Napoleons. Similar in size though, but not quite as physically heavy in raw materials. Take that as you will. All right, without further ado, now it's time to tell if the three burners are a benefit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is do a toast test and see which one has more even cooking. Then what I'm gonna do, shut them both off then fire them back up and just let them get as hot as possible. The toast test, I'm gonna to cook it on low just to see how we do with even heat. Then I'm gonna get them as hot as possible and see which one's gonna get hotter or better for cooking steaks. Like I said, I already feel like I know the Napoleon's gonna get hotter because we have way more BTUs in there. But the question is, is does that affect even cooking? Only one way to find out. It involves sandwich bread. Oh yeah. Uh oh, man down. If you guys haven't seen this before, again, we're basically scientists here. We love science, we love experiments. Uh, it's pretty simple. All you do is fill the, all the cooking grates up with bread and uh, fire it up, we're gonna fire it on low. And then what you can do is you get a really good vis visualization of where your hotspots are. Or if it cooks super, super even, you won't have any. However, I'm gonna tell you this, every single, single grill I've done this on, you're always gonna be warmer or cooler in the front, hotter in the back, some less than others. 
but we're always gonna be cooler up front. I would suspect the exact same thing here. All right, I gotta move quick because I want these basically starting at the exact same time. So I'm gonna watch. All right, there you got flame. Got flame on both. Gonna turn them both on low. All right, let's get these on. Got them all on. Gonna turn them as low as they'll go. There. All right, they're all on the lowest setting which is good because that's gonna ensure we don't have any hot spots or, or if one burner's just higher than the other, of course it's gonna cook unevenly, so we don't want that. All right, let's give these about four or five minutes and then we'll look at it. So they're both about dead on. They're climbing at about the same rate. They're both about ready to hit 200 degrees. At 200 degrees, I'm just gonna take a quick little peek just to make sure we're not burning. Because if you obliterate everything and it's all, the toast is all black, <laughs> then you can't tell which one was better. All right, let's take a quick little peek just to see. Nope, we're not even close yet. But I gotta do it again here just to make sure we're apples to apples since I opened the lid for both of them. Yeah, we're not ready yet. But it gets us going in the right direction at least. Okay, so just as I suspected, the Napoleon's starting to creep up faster. So we're pushing 300 degrees on the Napoleon, all on low. Here, we're not even at 250 yet. So I may have to kill the Napoleon faster to keep our science experiment uniform, right, Chris? Yeah. Because they're cooking, now they're starting to cook at different temperatures. I don't know what to do because everything's on low, so. All right, just a quick little peek, checking it in the middle. Oh yeah, look at that. In some nice, even toast lines. Let's peek on the end, pretty even. All right, was that about 10 seconds we had that open? Yeah. All right, we gotta do the same over here. 10 seconds. Not quite yet. All right, they're getting close though. Getting close. Maybe five more minutes. Okay, this grill's climbing. It's about 360, so I'm telling you, this grill's not gonna have any problem getting hot. Let's just take a look and see if we're getting close. I think we're pretty close. Ooh, that's hot, son of a gun. All right, let's kill these ones. I'm gonna give the Weber a little longer because it's running cooler. Should we kill this one? Yeah. All right, we're killing the Weber. We gave the Weber an extra minute or so. All right, guys, toast test is done. They're pretty stinking even. Um, the Napoleon you can see has darker char marks. That's because the grill was running hotter. And you can see we had a hot pocket. Hot pocket. Uh, right here. Just specifically this spot right here, which is kind of weird because it's in between the burners as the hottest spot, spot. But overall, it's cooking very even left to right, cooking very even back to front. Um, as always on the outer edges, it's gonna be cooler. For the most part, it cooked pretty even. Again, a little bit of hot spots. I've never seen a grill come out flawless. Weber, same thing. Kind of cooler around the edges. Not as dark of spots because our grill was running cooler. Um, and then a hot spot, again, right here, but this one's right over the burner. Right here, this strip was definitely running hot. I mean, look at that one. Um, all in all, I'm not going to nitpick one piece of toast, specifically being super burnt on each, both grills, maybe two on the Napoleon, but these grills are going to cook very, very even and uniform for you. So that being said, I was nervous that the, the Napoleon wouldn't cook that even because of that extra burner. I thought, well, maybe there's a reason Weber only has two burners. Not true. Um, I'd be curious to do these apples to apples and turn off the middle burner and see which one does better, but that's besides the point. So, because it still cooks as evenly, still have the same hot spot with only two burners. This is a huge benefit to me because I think it's gonna get a lot hotter and we're gonna be able to sear. Should we take off this toast and f see how hot these suckers can get? All right, let's fire these up. Although, I feel like I already know the answer. I mean, it's science at 30% more BTUs. The math is doing the job for us, but just for fun, let's do it for ourselves. We're gonna crank these on high. All 
All right, now we'll just wait a couple minutes. Here's the best part about while I wait for these grills to heat up. It's the new part of the showroom. Pretty awesome. All right, let's take a look-see here. So, just as I thought, Weber's at four, just shy of 450. We're a little over 550, pushing 600. So that's over 150 degree temperature swing. That's a big difference. So obviously that's gonna be a benefit for searing. We're gonna give it a couple more minutes, see how, how much we can max these guys out though. All right. I think they're about getting close to maxed out. We're almost sitting 700 on this bad dog. Should we see where we're at, Chris? Let's see. All right, so if you want to see your steak, of course you want to be above 500. Yeah, our cooking grates are 715, right dead center, 740. Let's check here. Yeah, if it was me, I, if I was searing my steaks, I'd cook them right in the middle, right here. Where, where it's the hottest. We're well above 700. You're not gonna have any problems here in a steak at 700 degrees. That's pretty cool. A grill under $500 is gonna get over 700 degrees. That's impressive. All right, Weber time. Again, not dogging the Weber. It's a good grill, but I mean, we're at 540. Cooking grates, 630. So our cooking grates are, are warm and again it's the hottest right in the middle 650 so not too bad 660 so it's close it's close it's definitely not as hot and again for a steak you're going to want to get that as hot as possible all right i shut everything off um conclusion is as you can see the hardware on these grills is very very similar um very, very close barbecues in general, but um, which one is the winner? Which one do you think I'm gonna say, Chris? Napoleon. Napoleon. I have to say it again. I don't think you'd be going wrong buying either one of these grills, but for me, um, I cook a lot of steaks and the hotter a grill can get, the better, as long as we don't sacrifice uh, those low temperatures either. And because the toast test was fairly even, I'm going Napoleon all day. I think it's more attractive. Um, I think it has a better ignition system and we have three burners, which means higher, more BTUs at hotter temperatures. No brainer for about the same price. You're getting the same customer support or similar customer support, 10 year warranty. So go with the one that's going to give you more features. Now there's going to be people on the channel and they're going to say, my grandpa had a Weber. I had a Weber. My dad had a Weber. They're the best things ever. I'm not going to fault you for getting this grill. It's a, it's a good grill for the money. That's why it's one of the most popular grills on the market. If you're a Weber fanboy, by all means, go get a Weber. If you want something that's better though, get the Napoleon. It's gonna have higher BTUs, better temperatures, um, and gonna give you more ability to sear and things like that. That's why for me, it's my choice. Thanks for checking out this video. If you guys have any more questions, you can call or text our staff. Stay tuned for more videos. We'll see you next time.